Hey, hey, hey. Tav heard the out of this world story from our space. It's always a green fly when your partner has a good relationship with their family. But what if it's too good? Like I'm dying cousin on cousin good. Today on our space, this story will make you second guess having a partner who still speaks to their family. If they don't have a family, they can't be kissing any of them, right? Wife slept with her cousin in my house, under my nose. So I did this. Hi, I'm Sam, male 35, married to Anna, female 32, for over a year. We met on a dating site where we both were enrolled to find serious partners for marriage. Entering the 30s and surrounded by friends and cousins who already have a toddler puts pressure on a single man, don't they? I didn't have a serious relationship for many years, so I'd take the help of these sites to find a woman. Anna was also going to the same bays. Being a woman, she was subjected to the additional stress of losing her fertile years just after entering her 30s. On the very first interaction, she made it clear that she was there for no fun, seeking a serious relationship. And so did I. We hit off from really well. She was from a neighboring town, but was open to shift into my city because her company had an easy transfer policy. Within weeks of chatting, we were planning for a meetup, and within months of seeing each other, we were talking about the marriage. I often traveled overnight to meet her on weekends, and she did the same sometimes. I thought it was the best thing to happen in my life. It wasn't the first time I had fallen for someone, but it was special. We met each other's parents, and they were more than happy to bless us for married life. We soon married, and I felt the selfless love and care I'd never experienced. The year after our marriage, Anna's uncle passed away, and we flew down to her hometown. She was very close to her uncle and wanted to spend a week with her aunt and her family. Although she asked me to return as my work was stalled, I offered to stay with her to help her cope with the loss. I've always been introverted, and in my teens, I used to envy those studs who could approach any girl to ask for a date. I barely had the confidence to approach anyone of my gender, forget about the girls. Over the years, I accepted my shyness as a shield and would interact only with like-minded people. This kept me out of trouble most of the time. But it wasn't helping my romantic life. I just had one relationship which succumbed to a slow death because it wasn't opening up with her friends. I wasn't comfortable around anyone but her, hence she left me. It was toxic, I know. I realized it much later. So, this time with Anna, I promised myself that I would not let this special bond perish from my timidness. I went the extra mile, literally, to gel with her friends and family. This was another reason I chose to stay with her and get to know her family. Before the wedding, I'd just met her parents for once, and then straight on to the wedding along with a few relatives. So I took that opportunity to spend time with her family. During that stay, I met with her cousin, Ryan. Anna's deceased uncle was Ryan's father. He was overly devastated by the loss. I found Ryan quiet and timid, hence I made an extra effort to bond with him because I knew the pain of being an introvert. Ryan was 30 and still living with his parents because he was supposed to overtake the family business. I don't know if there was something different in their family or with the town. Most of her cousins stayed with her parents and took care of the family business. When I asked Anna, she said her family was traditional and had been in the construction business for ages. Her great-grandfather started out small but created multiple business units, which he distributed amongst his children, and that's how the legacy was passed on. I was fascinated by it. As per Anna, Ryan was a black sheep who wasn't interested in running the family business and was interested in the creative field, probably wanting to have an art gallery or something. However, his family did not approve of his passion and forced him to join his father and brothers at the office. While Ryan did not open up much about his life, Anna asked if I could help him set up a gallery by pulling up some of my contacts. Actually, I worked for an e-commerce startup that deals with antique jewelry. Although I didn't know anyone who could actively help Ryan, I agreed to help with the confidence that I could figure out something. It was a peaceful week's stay with her family. I got to know them and their tradition. Anna took me to her ancestral homes by the countryside and made me taste the local cuisine. I was amazed at how diverse we are as a country. I was born and brought up in the heart of LA. Hence, I'd never been exposed to those cultures before, and I loved it. Soon after we returned, Anna told me that Ryan wanted to move to LA to pursue his career and requested that we let him stay with us until he got a job. I happily agreed. This was a month ago. I greeted Ryan and made him comfortable at my house. He said he would look for a part-time job and meanwhile pursue his passion for art. I offered to help him in any way I could. As the days passed, I noticed a very peculiar behavior in Anna. Although she seemed much happier than she used to be before her cousin moved in, she distanced herself from me romantically. Before Ryan moved in, we never had to think about privacy because we lived by ourselves. The whole house was our bedroom, you know what I mean? After Ryan moved in, we just had our bedroom. So whenever I took initiative for intimacy, she would push me off, saying that her cousin was around and he might hear us. 
I backed off for the initial few days without any second thought. But now it's getting on my nerves. She does not understand that she is irritating me and eventually making me hate her cousin. There is one more problem. Food. Thing is, Ryan has a fetish for seafood, and I'm allergic to it. I also cannot stand the smell of it. It is understandable to cook favorite meals for the guests, but Ryan was not a guest. He is living with us. I didn't mind when she cooked it for the first week, but having seafood on the table every other day annoys me. That, too, if I had to fill my stomach with just salad. We had divided the responsibility in a way that she would cook and I would clean, so I had no option but to wash the stinky dishes on which she and her cousin had gorged upon. I know I might sound rude, but I'm frustrated. When I confronted her that she should make something for me as I can't have a salad every day, she said she doesn't have the time to cook two different types of meals. I suggested she could themselves take a break of her seafood on some days and cook something else so I could also have a full meal. She got defensive, saying that I was rude. Sometimes, I don't understand her. Ryan, too, doesn't lift a finger at the house. I mean, he's no longer a guest. He's been staying here for two months, and I don't know how long he will stay further. He should take up household responsibilities, considering he's living rent-free with free food. I reached my boiling point yesterday when I asked her to switch responsibilities, that I would cook and she would clean. I know I tried to play smart and take control of food, but she turned out smarter and caught me. She said that if I took the responsibility of food, she and her cousin would have to bid goodbye to seafood, which she couldn't compromise. She suggested I cook my own meal if I was that adverse to marine animals. I hated her sarcasm. I wanted to yell at her and knock some sense into it that I work for 45 hours a week and I cannot spend endless hours in the kitchen. The thing is, I'm getting annoyed by them to the point that I don't respond properly to Anna or Ryan. Anna's protectiveness for her cousin makes me hate him, and I want him to move out ASAP. Sometimes when I clear my head and think, I feel that I'm being rude to Ryan, and maybe I'm giving a signal that I'm doing a favor to him by letting him live with us. I genuinely don't feel like that, but Anna's attitude is pushing my buttons. I have discussed this with a few of my colleagues and got a mixed reaction. Some say I'm annoyed because our privacy is intruded and some acknowledge a problem with Anna. I'm posting it here to get some perspective. If anyone has faced a similar issue, Kyla suggests what I should do. Sounds like both parties are at fault here. There seems to be a disconnection between the two of you. Both of you, at this point, are communicating how each other truly feels. You both just need to talk to each other and really lay it all out on the table. Update 1 Hi all. Thanks for hearing my rant and giving some solid advice. The day after my original post, I subtly brought up the topic on the dinner table, in front of Ryan, that we should make a weekly dinner menu that should have the preferable food of all three of us, rotated over a week, so that I could at least have a proper food on two days of the week. Anna rolled her eyes, indicating I shouldn't have brought that topic in front of Ryan, but Ryan was quick to agree and apologize for being inconsiderate all the while. The discussion ended on a good note. I felt that I was unnecessarily exaggerating the situation, which got solved so easily. But one of the issues got solved, or at least got mitigated, and his growing distance still bothered me. Our sex life is close to null because she's too busy setting up her cousin's life. She has been taking a lot of leads from her office to accompany him to his interviews. Ryan is also looking for a job in a ceramic institute. I don't know if I have a limited understanding of art, or if he's confused about his job plans. I don't know. I'm just watching them running hayware, dumbbounded, waiting for the day he gets a job and moves out. Anyways, today I'm here to share a pestering concern. Last week, I had light work, so I came home early on most days. It was disturbing to find Anna sitting so cozily with Ryan. Although nothing explicit, their body language is alarming. I made her legs on his thighs. Sometimes he leaned over her shoulder. It is understandable when cousins are young, but both are in their thirties, and one is married. When I discussed this with my close friend, he dismissed it, saying he was just annoyed by Ryan's presence, and some baking on him. I know it is outrageous to assume such things between cousins. Maybe I'm just presumptuous, but it hurts to see Anna sitting so cozily with Ryan while pushing me away saying she was tired and not in the mood. This concern of mine is so sensitive that I'm afraid to confront Anne about it. I might sound disoriented or delusional, but I need serious advice on how to proceed. That does seem too close for comfort to do with a cousin, but it's hard to presume things when we don't really know their relationship or their history, so I can understand your hesitation in bringing this up to her. But I think it's natural to think that their closeness might be too close for cousins. A light resting on his thigh might surely raise some eyebrows. Update 2. I. I know I'm updating after a long time. It has been the most disturbing and traumatic time of my life. I'll jump straight into the update. I caught Anna sleeping with Ryan. Soon after Ryan shifted, 
I had a disturbing feeling about seeing them together. However, I ignored it. Even when writing the last update, I had a strong instinct that something was rotting between them, but I didn't want to sound presumptuous. A few days after my last update, I arrived early to find my house locked. Usually, Anna or Ryan used to be at home, but that day it was locked. I texted Anna asking her when she would return. She didn't reply to my text. I was feeling uneasy so I decided to go for a run. I went to the nearby citizen park and guess whom did I run into? My wife and her cousin. They were hugging each other, sitting on a bench surrounded by dense bushes. It was so sudden that none of us got a chance to react. I just stopped. And so did they. It was like suddenly two heads popped out from behind the bushes. And I had direct eye contact with Ryan, who immediately pushed Anna away, whose eyes were closed while hugging. I asked them what they were up to. It should have been the end. But Anna was very calm and said, Oh, hi, you're here. Actually, Ryan was feeling low, so I took him for a walk. Let's go home. I was so confused and shocked that I barely spoke a word after that. In fact, all three of us walked silently on the way back home. After returning home, I sat down in my bed for an hour, unable to comprehend what I'd witnessed minutes ago. When she came to call me for dinner, it gave her a look, but she stared back, asking me why I looked intensely. I silently ate dinner and went to bed. I didn't look at either of them at the dinner table. When she came to sleep and tried to hug me, I told her I was disturbed seeing her hugging Ryan so passionately. She chuckled at me, saying that Ryan was her cousin and it was just a sibling hug. It should not bother me at all. I realized later that Anna was playing mind games. She did not act shocked. She did not apologize because she was hugging her cousin. It was no big deal. However much I tried to sweep it under the rugs that they were cousins, it was bothering me. So, I devised a plan to find out the truth. As some of you suggested in my last update, I should hire a PI. But I thought it wouldn't be fruitful because the suspect was right inside my house. So I bought some hidden cameras with the intention of placing them in several corners of the house. But the challenge was that Ryan was mostly at home. I don't know what he was up to. By then, I'd understood that he was not serious about work. He was lurking around in my house, and I had to get rid of him. Anyhow. I told them my company is sending me on a two-day work trip to London. Before that, I would work from home for a few days to finish a presentation I would need in my London visit. It was all made up, but it did take a week off from work to wrap up this saga, and I did book a flight ticket to show them. So, while I was at home, Ryan would dress up formally, take his files, and pretend he was going for an interview. I don't know. I may be assuming that he was acting, but I don't care. I used the opportunity to plant several cameras and mics in different corners of the house. I did this during Anna's office hours after locking the house from the inside so it cannot be unlocked using duplicate keys. Although nothing concrete came up except Anna and Ryan exchanging intense eye contact and Ryan fondling Anna's hand while passing, that evidence could also prove what was happening between them. But I wanted a dirty one to humiliate them. On the day of my scheduled flight, Anna offered to drop me to the airport. Maybe she wanted to ensure that I was actually out of the country before they started their dirty business. I declined, stating that my flight was in the afternoon and I would leave directly from my office, so it was unnecessary for her to hassle. That day, I left the house and checked into a hotel for two days. I waited patiently until the evening when Anna returned from her office. She returned home and called me, asking if I reached the airport. I told her I had boarded and the flight was about to take off. I kept the phone on airplane mode just in case she called to check. But why would she bother to confirm when her lover was already caressing her while she was on a call with me? Disgusting. As soon as she disconnected the call, he pounced on her, and I could see my marriage falling apart right before me. A couple of minutes into that, I turned off the app that was displaying the live recording. I knew I would die of suffocation in the next two days, so after an hour, I logged in again to see if enough evidence was collected so that I could put an end to this. When I logged in, I found a clip where Ryan actually discovers the camera and panics. They then hunt for the remaining cameras and mics, and while doing so, Anna stands in front of one of the cameras and curses me. The recordings had stopped by then, which meant they had destroyed everything. I checked the save recordings, which were just enough to prove their illicit relationship so I headed home. I barged into the house to find Anna talking over the phone while Ryan had already fled. She had such criminal eyes that I actually got scared for a moment. She accused me of plotting against them. I told that she should consider herself lucky that I didn't smack her head or chase down her lover so she could cut short her BS and come to the point. I asked her to confess everything to me or else I would involve her parents. She then narrated that she and Ryan were always in love with each other. However, they both knew they could not be together. They had initially decided to never get married and secretly continue with their filthy business. But as Anna hit her 30s, her traditional family insisted she get married, so she was online looking for a guy from a different city to execute their plan. 
Luckily, she found me desperate enough to marry her without spending too much time dating. In the end, she suggested that we continue to be married couples and lead our lives independently, meaning I can sleep with anyone while she can continue to bang her cousin. I felt disgusted at her suggestion. Unlike in other cases where people plead for forgiveness and a second chance, Anna was unapologetic. Her cold expression gave me goosebumps. I felt so uncomfortable sharing a roof with her that I gave her the ultimatum of a day to vacate the house and move back to my hotel. The next day she texted me that she had vacated the house. I went to find that, actually, she did. More than emptiness, I felt a sense of relief. I spent the next few days contemplating my future and the next few weeks drinking over my misery. But that's unimportant. What Anna did, next, pushed me to the extreme. A week after Anna left, her parents called my father, threatening to sue me. I don't know why you didn't call me. Her father was that kind of a strict man who would urge to have any critical discussion with the parents and not with the children. Apparently, Anna had told them I was spy on her by placing cameras and mics in the house. She said I was over-possessive about her and had a problem if she spoke to any other men, including her cousin. She also added that I was violent and threatened to smack her head to kill her. This came out of the blue to my parents because I hadn't told them about Anna's cheating yet. In fact, I didn't intend to expose her to anyone, but she left no choice to me. In the moment of rage, I forwarded those video clips to her father. I took Ryan's parents' number from the family group and sent a copy to him as well. I also told them he should be thankful to me for not sharing the clips in the family group. Within minutes, my phone was bombarded with voicemails from Anna, accusing me of betraying her. She said it was a deal between us that I won't reveal the truth to anyone. Now, when I retrospect, I remember when I was leaving again for the hotel that night, I told her, vacate my house in a day and sign the divorce papers uncontested. I won't expose you. It wasn't a promise. Even if it was, she maligned me in front of her family to come out clean. Her father threatened my parents to chase me down. What else did she expect me to do in that situation? My father suggested that we lodge a police complaint before they filed us for domestic violence. I told my parents I was never violent with her, but they said it would take years to prove myself innocent, so it's better to be vigilant. We lodged a complaint and got a restraining order against Anna and her family. During the divorce proceedings, she joined virtually citing health issues that barred her from traveling down to another city. She was alone on the video chat and kept quiet during the trial. I didn't want any further hassle in my life, so I kept the divorce terms clean. It was a simple, irreconcilable difference between us, and we divorced. It's been three months since then, and I have not heard from her or her parents. I think they understood that it was their daughter who was at fault. It feels like I had a long nightmare, and now I'm awake to find the same loneliness. I think it'll take time to get over it. I sometimes still curse myself for being so vulnerable that she was able to prey on me so easily. Nonetheless, I'm recovering. Wish me luck. Oh wow. They actually went there. Kissing cousins. I'm so sorry, OP. I mean, it's one thing to find your spouse cheating on you. It's another to find that they are cheating on you with their own flesh and blood. Good on you for collecting necessary evidence. It's a hard thing to believe and I'm sure you would have had a hard time convincing people of what you saw had you not collected the hard facts is some sort of silver lining. You've definitely grown in this experience and you're no longer that shy, introverted man you once were. I'm just sorry you took all of this to become the man you are today. Wishing you all the best moving forward, OP. Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss new content. See you soon.